Today I got a brand new Dell Inspiron 14 inch laptop. I'm going to do some upgrading and cloning on it. I'll show you how I do it. Let's get started. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I got a brand new Dell 14 inch laptop. It's a 5000 series. The exact model is a 5402 or 5402 model. Uh, 14 inch full HD 1080p display. It's got a backlit keyboard. It's very thin, very portable. It has micro SD slot, USB port. It's got a headphone jack over here on this side. There is one thing I don't like about it, and I'll show you in a minute. Uh, it's got a C type USB port, another um, 3.1 USB A port, HDMI, and of course your power cord goes right there. Okay, um, the finish on this, I don't like the finish, it's kind of a, like a flat paint and if you rub it and touch it just the wrong way, it just it's hard to see, but I don't really care for the finish on it. It's not glossy or semi-gloss, it's like a flat textury paint, just not real exciting. But anyway, I wanted to point that out. <clears throat> but it is a nice little laptop, it's very snappy, it has a new 11th gen Intel Core i3 processor in it, it's the 1115G4 CPU. This model comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, a 256 gigabyte NVMe slot, and it has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth, the Intel AX201, and standard Intel UHD graphics. Um, got a 65 watt power adapter here, standard, the small barrel on the cord here. And like I said, it's pretty good the way it is, but the customer who just bought it wants me to beef it up just a little bit. So what I'm going to add to it is we're going to go from 256 SSD, I'm going to put in a brand new Samsung Evo 970 Evo Plus, a 500 gig, 500 gigabyte, you could easily put a larger one in there as well. And I'm going to clone what's on here already onto this. Just for the sake of the video, I want to show you how to clone using the Samsung data migration software, which is free to download. I'll have a link down below the video where you can go and download it. I've already pre-installed it on the laptop. It, it's right here, there's a shortcut for it. So, and I'm gonna take out the RAM that's in there and put in two eight gig sticks of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM to give it 16 gigs of RAM in total in dual channel. So, it'll be a nice little upgrade, little room for expansion inside, and I'll show you once I get inside what I'm talking about. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I start tearing it apart is we have to clone the drive that's in there under this brand new Samsung drive. And I got a USB um, to M.2 NVMe adapter slash enclosure. Got a little button here to slide it open. And it, it, it'll accommodate all the different size SSDs, the 2280, the 60, the 42, etc. So I'm going to take my drive, pop it in the slot, now this particular device or adapter here only works with M NVMe PCI Express. It will not work with a, a SATA M.2 drive. There are adapters you can buy just for that, but this particular one only works with PCI Express. So there's no tools, it just snaps over that little grommet there that I boogered up a little bit. I got several of these laying around the shop, we use them all the time. For the sake of these videos, I'd like to show you how to use it. So, once you're done cloning, you can put another drive in there if you want. Just use it as an external SSD. It's very fast. Comes with a USB-C to A. It also comes with a USB-C to C cable that you can use. In this case, I'm going to use the A. I'm going to plug it into the USB port. And it shouldn't matter which USB you put it in. So now that it's in there, I'm going to go ahead and open my data migration software from Samsung. It's free. Very simple to install and download. So the interface opens right up. Now if we go to the top here, the source drive, it's already showing the ADATA 256 drive, the only choice in there right now. Okay, so we're gonna go down to the source, or the target drive. We're gonna click on that, and here's our Samsung drive right here. It's kinda hard to see. And it's gonna show you what it's gonna do here, the layouts of the partitions. You simply go down, I'm gonna click on Start. And this is letting you know that when it's done, you need to put the drive in and all that good stuff. Just hit OK. 
and it's at zero percent. Once it clicks up to like one percent, I'll pause filming for a few minutes and I'll come back when it's just about done. Now this process will go very quick because there's not a ton of data on here like photos and documents and videos and music and that kind of stuff. But I could easily just do a clean install on this, um, but I wanted to show you how to use the software, a lot of the diff uh, different models that we deal with. And it just closed. Hey guys, uh, I started the Samsung software as you saw there and it crashed out. Silly me, I forgot. All the new Dells that I've done lately are coming right shipped from the factory with drive encryption enabled. So you can't clone when that is turned on. So let me go to the start button here. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to update and security and it's right down here where it says drive or device encryption. We have to simply turn it off. And you can turn this back on later, but it's kind of like BitLocker basically. So we're going to turn it off and yep. We're going to confirm that. This will take a few minutes for it to completely disable. Then we're good to go on the cloning. So I'm not going to bore you sitting here watching this. I'm going to let this finish. Don't do anything. Well, it's just, well, you can use a laptop if you want, but I'm just going to let sit here and finish, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys, I turned off the drive encryption. It finished. It didn't take too long. Now, if you have a lot of data and programs and apps on your, on your computer when you disable encryption or turn it on, it does take quite some time, so you have to be patient. Anyway, you can see it's turned off because now it's got the option to turn on, which I'm not going to do. And I'm going to open and back up my data migration software here. I'm glad I got to show you that because that's something that's very easy to overlook. Uh, there's our source drive, our A Data 256. We're going to go down here and select our Samsung Evo, just like before, and click on Start. Just hit OK on this, just telling you that it's going to shut down when it's all done. And once it hits 1% there, like I attempted to a minute ago, then I'm going to pause and I'll come back. Just don't want to bore you with watching that click through the numbers there. Then I'll open it up, put our new SSD in. Um, Hopefully a good clone, our new RAM, and we should be good to go. But again, this is brand new, basically out of the box. There's not a ton of customer data or anything like that on it. So it's already started. It's cranking through at 4%, 5%. I'm going to go ahead and let this get almost to the end, guys, and I'll be back, and we'll wrap this up. We'll get inside and put in new parts. All right, guys, it just finished. As soon as it finishes, it pops right up and says shutting down. I don't know if you caught that or not, but it's just doing that all on its own because it wants us to install the new drive. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. I'm going to get my drive out of my enclosure here. I'll have a link down below where you can buy these adapter slash enclosures. Like I said, we use them all the time around here. We do have a cloning station here in the shop that we use a lot more than this way. But sometimes you have to do it this way, special circumstances. So I'm going to get this out of the way. But I do these videos just so I can show you how to do the different cloning methods with the different models. It's not like, you know, etched in stone around here how we clone a drive. There's lots of different ways. So we have the clone drive sitting there. I'm going to close it up. On the bottom of this model here, again, this is the 5402 model. I've already taken out these four screws here. They're all the same length. I used a number zero Phillips screwdriver. And again, with the Dell in the back here, these screws stay in the chassis here. We just have to loosen them until it starts clicking. You're going to see as I'm loosening it, it's kind of pulling it up. You just want to get it all the way unthreaded. Try not to scratch anything. You basically, you, you can tell just by the feel or the clicking that it makes when it's unthreaded just like that but they they will stay in there you can see it's kind of just lifting lifting it up go a couple more turns just to make sure there all right so i'm going to take my little spudger tool and i'll have a link down below where you can buy these you can see how it's already pulled the bottom up kind of on its own I'll just get my tool in here. And these do pop off quite easily. Let's get it started here. Just always be careful when you're putting your tools in around these where these ports are because you can see the 
bezel here is very thin. You don't want to you don't want to bend that or break it or crack it. This doesn't take a whole lot of effort. Now, as with any project like this, I always like to tell my viewers make sure you're protected against static electricity. Uh, wear a wristband, an anti-static mat or both. Our shop here, our bench tops are all anti-static. Special carpet. We got a spray we use on the floor. 25 plus years, never had a single static discharge ever. So we're all protected and this is all anti-scratch proof, so to speak. It's built for this kind of work specifically, so. Alright, so we got it broke loose. Now it's going to simply lift right off and you can see those screws just stayed right in the bottom cover there. So we'll set that out of the way. But now that you have it open, be very careful poking and prodding around in here. Uh, the first thing that I, I always like to do is, here's our battery pack. Uh, we're going to disconnect it from the motherboard. Now this particular style of battery, you can also disconnect it over here right from the battery pack itself. But I'm going to do it this way. Sometimes these are a little stubborn getting back on and you don't want to damage that. So I'm going to go ahead. They have tape here that I have to lift up. Just got to get our little plastic tool on here. And remember there's juice in there. I want to get this tape off the battery here. Just like that. Now that is going to pull straight back. See how it doesn't take hardly any pressure at all. Boom, it's disconnected. Okay? So as one added precaution, I'm going to open it carefully and I'm going to hit our power button here a few times. The power button on this model here also serves as a, a fingerprint sensor. Alright, that should be good. Alright, as you can see here, uh, we're going to do this drive first before we do the RAM. There's two slots over here, no onboard memory on this one. Um, this has got a little 2242 drive in there. I am going to remove that screw that's holding it in, but there's a bracket that we have to move. They're a little tricky. So there's our drive. Going to get that out of the way. This is kind of hard to see, but this little mounting bracket here for the um, the SSD, we have to remove this silvery part out of here and put it in over here. We're going to flip it around. So it simply, I'm going to slide it back like this. It should release just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and flip it around. And we're going to slide it in right here if you watch. These two little arms here are going to go underneath these two little arms. Just got to get it lined up right. Just like that. get it locked in there and that's so our 2280 drive can now be accommodated in there <clears throat> so which is right here hopefully with a good clone gonna plug it in I'm sure it lines up good which it does now this is not a gaming laptop by gaming laptop by any stretch of the imagination it'll be nice snappy general productivity type laptop lots of other stuff probably play some basic games I'm sure but we're gonna put that screw back in there so these drives do run a little hot I didn't show you but on the bottom side of this particular NVMe drive there is a little copper plating heat shield that runs most of the length here to help even out the, the heat dissipation as well as this label now you could um, always use heat pads like this Okay, but in this situation, I'm not going to do that because I just don't think it's necessary. I've done lots of laptops like this. This isn't going to be, like I said, a high-end gaming computer. There's decent ventilation along here with the fan. So I think we're going to be just fine. All right, so we got the SSD all mounted. And now we're going to go over here and switch out our RAM. Get everything out of the way here. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to lift up these little shields here we got here, and we're going to grab these little metal clips right here on the side. You're going to spread them out gently, and it pops right up. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Oop, this one goes on the opposite. Just going to grab the little clips. 
should get come right up. <clears throat> now this is DDR3200 I'm putting in here, 8 gig stick. I'm going to put one on each side, so we'll have 16 gigs in dual channel, hopefully. See, it just only goes in one way. Just make sure it's in all the way and you get a good click. All right, looks like it's in there good. I recently did a video where on a gaming laptop where one of my viewers noticed that I didn't put the RAM in quite all the way. It worked, but it didn't on one side it didn't click down all the way. He pointed that out, but after we actually did the video, my cleanup guy actually noticed doing these videos sometimes I just miss little things like that. So it was caught. So sometimes I I don't like the way they click. There. Alright, so that looks good to me. So there's our RAM, there's our new SSD. Um, now what I wanted to, I mentioned earlier, this has actually got a second PCI Express M.2 NVMe slot right here. This is SSD2, it's marked on the board. So you could take a second, I thought I had one laying around here. I usually do. Well anyway, you could put a second, oh, can you hand me that one sitting right there? That, no, that, the, the 2280, there you go. So this is actually not, just to show you, this is where you would mount this drive, right here guys. And right here is a mounting hole, but they don't, it's plastic, it is threaded, and all you need to put a drive in there, I had one laying here a second ago. All you need is a screw, same kind of screw you would mount a hard drive in a caddy with. And it works just fine. I'm just doing this for demonstration, guys. I'm not going to leave this in there. But this threads in there quite nicely. Just like that, okay? So there is room for growth there for a second NVMe drive. Nice little, nice little feature in this 11th gen i3 laptop. So I'm going to take that back out. I just wanted to show you that that does accommodate a second NVMe drive. This is just some crappy drive I had laying around. All right, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hook my battery back up. I'm just going to put it back in the same way I took it out. It should slide in. Now, remember, once you hook up that battery, be careful. Try not to touch stuff you don't need to touch. Make sure you get in there. I'm going to put my I tape back down. All right, so you know we got a fairly decent little cooling system here for an i3. Here's our Wi-Fi card, our battery. Um, pretty compact in here, guys. Very small logic board or motherboard as well. Not much to it. So I'm going to go ahead and put the panel back on here, the bottom cover. And with all jobs, I'm not going to put all the screws back in until I know I got a good clone and all that fun stuff. But I'm just going to snap it back into place. Now along the back here, it's not going to snap down. You're just going to pull it down by using your screwdriver, which I'm going to do right now. That's the click we wanted to hear. <clears throat> sure it's down nice and good which it is looks good so now I'm gonna and I did all that cloning and whatnot running on battery I'm gonna plug in my AC adapter here which as I mentioned is a 65 water for this model hit our power button and see if our clone went good now when you add new RAM to Today's new modern laptops and even SSDs for that matter, but mainly RAM. A lot of times it takes a minute or two for it to post. It's reading. It might even pop up here and tell me that something has changed. But you just got to be patient when you turn them on for the first time. <clears throat> it's powered on right now. I'm just waiting for it to post, so to speak.
There we got a Dell. So now it popped up and it's telling us the amount of system memory memory has changed. So I'm just going to choose continue. We don't need to go into the BIOS. Now, as I've mentioned before in other videos, the, the new Dells, pretty much all the new Dells, all the new Lenovo idea pads have a feature in the BIOS that you can turn on and off. It's like flip to boot or when you open the lid, it powers on the laptop with, without the use of the power button. Uh, this one has that. I have it disabled. So now we got a good clone. We booted right into Windows. You know, none of the updates or what or whatnot are installed in here. You can see our data migration software is still there. So I'm going to go to Task Manager. Oop. <laughs> Click on Performance. Go to Memory. Here showing a total of 16 gigs at 3200 megahertz. Two of eight slots used. There's not physically eight slots in there. That's just the motherboard. So I'm going to go over here to my PC or this PC. Here's our new drive, 500 gigabytes, so we got a nice upgrade, Extra, a lot of extra RAM, quite a bit more storage, twice the storage that we started out with. Uh, let me just show you something real quick. I'm going to go ahead and do a shutdown on this real quick, guys. I believe it's F2. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back on, hit the F2 key here. F2 will get us into the BIOS here. Here's the, the new Dell BIOSes, BIOSes, however you say that. Um, for that open lid to power on, if you go over here on the side where it says power right here, choose that. And over on this page, you're going to scroll all the way down. Just It's kind of tricky with these mouse pointers in the BIOS. They don't work so good. So scr scroll down until you get right here where it says power on lid option. You can see I have it currently turned off. But if you turn it back on, that means every time you open your lid, it's just going to automatically turn on and boot into Windows without the use of the power button. I personally don't like it, so that's why it's disabled on this one. There, we got a good clone, nice little upgrade um, to an otherwise pretty simple little laptop, backlit keyboard. Um, I appreciate you all watching. Uh, leave comments. If you like it, give me a like. Uh, if you love it, give me a sub. That'd be great. Have a great day.